Gina DeLuca here. All right, today I'm doing another test of these paints in a straight pour. I have the DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in silver, the sterling silver specifically, and in garnet. My background color is Liquid Tex Basics in the cerulean blue and I will tell you <laughs> uh, I did the edge with what was left of a bottle and this is a new bottle and I squirted it into my cup and it was lumpy if this has ever happened to you it is not a lost cause what I did was uh, always when I first uh, am, am getting my cups prepared. I put a little bit of my pouring medium into the bottom of the cup and then I add my paint and I will mix that with that little bit of pouring medium. In the instance that it turns out lumpy, which seems to happen frequently with uh, metallic paints, even if it doesn't come out of the tube lumpy, when you add your flow trawl or your pouring medium to it, it can get lumpy. Just slowly add more pouring medium, keep mixing, 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 uh, until you can get it to a consistency that is pourable. This is a straight pour, so I was able to make it pretty thin. And what I do then is take a piece of nylon stocking and I rubber band it to the top of the cup and then I strain it and pour it into the, uh, another cup. So eventually those lumps will incorporate. It does take some time working it in there, let it sit a little bit. Uh, if it's really stubborn, you can add a few drops of alcohol. That may help. Uh, but I strained it, and it appears to be fine. Most of the gunk that I could see. Let me show you what this consistency is. So it's not really making a mound. It's just disappearing into the cup air into the paint pretty quickly. The paints are mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol, to which I have added my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the proper consistency. For the straight gores that I do, I generally go for a consistency of one. If you would like more information on that, it is in the description box below this video. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, just fast forward about a minute and 15 seconds, but if you have not, what we have here, it's 52 cards in total. 42 of the cards are technique cards. Each technique has an associated video on YouTube where you can get all the information that you need, the how-to, the picture of the painting, of course. This little box here has a tip in it to uh, help you out with each particular technique. And then there is a color palette these two boxes are also uh, designed to be able to be used as a two color pour or as the basis of another pour. Also included are eight bonus color palette cards, five palettes on each card, use all of the colors, use some of the colors. Just to get your juices flowing, you can mix and match with the techniques 
So you already did these colors, well I'll say, oh, I'll pick one off of the card or just randomly draw one from the deck, mix and match, thousands of combinations, and these are available at my website, ginadeluca.net. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is lay down my base coat. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do here is lay down my base coat. I like to mix my base coat generally a hair thinner than the rest of my paints. At the very least, the same, never ever thicker. That is not your friend, well, unless you're doing a swipe and then you want your base coat thicker than your swipe paint. Okay, my base coat is down and I'm going to put some paint in a cup. I'm gonna start with the blue, my background color. I will do the red next. And I'm gonna try to minimize the blending as much as I can. I really want these cells to pop in the color that I'm seeing right here. Less, uh, I'm probably gonna wind up with some purple action, but I'm gonna try to avoid that as much as possible. Okay, and now for the silver. I do have a bit of this base coat blue. And I'm gonna just put a little bit on the top. Okay, that uh, blue that I put on top is starting to sink, so let's get this party started, shall we? My reasoning is Putting that bit of blue on top will give some of that background color for those cells to pop through. I can't tell if that's all gonna be blue or if some of that is mixed in. I'm gonna make cells. Normally I do pour it up from a bit higher to get it to mix in, but I didn't wanna make purple. And I do see some color in there, so hopefully I'll have those red cells popping up. Fingers crossed. I'm going to pop these bubbles. Now 
This is off to a great start. Look at these cells popping up already. So there's just enough red mixed in that blue that I'm gonna get those red cells popping up. Hopefully uh, I'll be getting a little more of that silver popping through. All right, let me get my corner catcher ready. It's just a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna come this way first this time. I kind of make my decision based on which side looks like it will fit into a corner the best. Okay, like I'm gonna do this side. I do think I might be losing a good bit of that silver. I hope I can get some to pop up. Actually, I'm going to go this way. Always remember to recenter your paint, the weight of your paint, before changing directions. The weight of your paint is going to be wherever it's moving the fastest. You can really get a lot of control by learning how to read that. Wowee. Does that red sell? So this is acting the way the sapphire blue did. Those are gigantic. I think these might be the biggest cells I've gotten on a 16 by 20 because usually I have to do this on a bigger canvas and really stretch it to get those cells that big. That is something else. Oh, I see silver popping up. All right, so I'm gonna move this around just to get some stretching. The more I stretch, the more of the silver I should get popping up. Also, that red is probably going to fill in that blue. I'm going to tip some of this off right here. 
I know you might be yelling at me, but I need this to stretch. Just a bit. Bringing my weight back to center. Going to come this way a bit and try to get some stretch on that top. But not so much that I'm tilting any paint off. I will stop it just before. And I will do the same for this side. And now I am adjusting this for composition. All right, I don't know if the silver cells are gonna pop up or not. I'm kind of okay with how it is. Uh, still got some cool 3D stuff going on here. I definitely am gonna be using this red and that sapphire blue together. I really think some cool effects could, uh, could be had. I imagine uh, on a giant canvas, these things making enormous, gorgeous cells. Okay, I'm going to let this sit and do what it does, and then I will bring you in for a close-up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. Uh, I think these are the biggest cells I've ever gotten. Yeah. Like, even on a big, bigger canvas, like video uh, 16, I don't think they're that big. They are gigantic. That cool 3D effect on the edges. Then these cool things going on over here. Didn't get a little bit of purple. I didn't get the silver pearl cells I was expecting, but I'm kind of glad. Because if there was a bunch of that, I probably wouldn't like it quite as much. Satchmo is playing in the background. That's that noise. Gigantic cells. I am so looking forward to experimenting. I love the silver with this. I think I want to try this again, but let the silver mix in. And you can see there's like some cool shading going on. So I will definitely be doing this again. That silver really pops on top of that. And that is just a pretty little cross section right there. I'm definitely happy with this piece. I love this color. It is so pretty.
yeah it's good to be back y'all it's good to be painting and looking forward to painting again i know some of y'all out there in your funk too just do it just paint recreate your favorite painting do the thing you're most comfortable with Thank you for that advice, Sarah Mack. You helped me get out of my funk because I was pouring nothing I liked and Sarah said, just do what you know, do what you're best at. And I was like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> it would be a lot easier. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there it is. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. I sure did. If you enjoyed it, do like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. That just looks so 3D. The color keeps shifting on me. Yes, but like and share and subscribe. Make sure you click uh, on your notifications because I don't think that people are getting emails anymore. You have to come look for me, and I promise I will be posting more regularly. Check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar, my Venmo tip jar, if you feel so inclined. Want to help me stay stocked up in paint so I can keep bringing you the uh, groovy experiments. Also in the description box is the link to my Amazon store. Most of the things that I use are in the Amazon store. But if it's not, anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, if you use that link, I will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. And let's see what else. Uh, also in the description box is the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. And speaking of inspiration, you can find the Fluid Art Inspiration cards as well as my music and my artwork for sale at ginadeluca.net. Okay, that's my spiel. That's it for me. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>